Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest and California Weather Watch. Let's take a look at the April 5th total solar eclipse forecast. Again, looking at this map, you can see where totality begins. It's this middle bar right here and you wanna make sure you are positioned in the middle bar. It is a night and day difference to even be just slightly outside of that area here. So make your plans, make them now, and hopefully you have things already lined up because things are sold out along this path of the eclipse here. And we're gonna try to pinpoint just exactly what the weather is going to be doing and which areas have the best chance of this viewing of the total solar eclipse. So this is Colleen, Texas, and I love this website here because you can scroll back and forth and see just exactly when the sun is going to start being eclipsed by the moon here, and then you're in totality, and you'll see exactly when it ends. I'll tell you the exact exact time. You can click on this map up here and click on any given location. It'll show your interaction with the sun there. So very nice website here. Now the issue is here on April 8th, we're dealing with this area, potential severe weather as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. There's going to be literally millions of people out here trying to view this eclipse and traffic will be slow moving and it'll be slow going. And you could easily get caught up here in that traffic when these severe storms start to you know, develop. So this is gonna be a problem in of itself. And not to mention the high and mid-level clouds that have been showing in the model runs the last few days. So we're gonna be looking at this very carefully over the next few days as well. High resolution models are almost there. By the time we get towards tomorrow morning, we're gonna have a look at some of the high resolution models. But this is what the European here is showing just three hours after the eclipse. And you can see a lot of lightning out there, severe storm potential and if we scroll through that you can kind of see these severe storms moving across places just north of Dallas or just off to the east and southeast of Dallas where people are going to be out there trying to view the eclipse so be prepared for that severe weather as well as you go on into the afternoon and evening hours now this is what's going on at 39,000 feet this is the European 200 millibars you can see the system rolling through here a strong associated subtropical jet stream as we move into the morning of April 8th hanging all the way back across Baja across portions of California as well so this is going to be trying to spread some high or mid-level clouds across the region it's going to help some of that severe thunderstorm development as we go on into the afternoon of April 8th you can kind of see the trough dug out across much of the southwest USA and that is the problem here because it's trying to spread clouds back and forth and the models are kind of waffling back and forth on just who is going to be clearest for this event but if you can make changes back to the northeast here it might actually be the best viewing even though it's not going to be the longest path of totality I mean the longest duration of totality with that total solar eclipse you're still looking at close to three and a half minutes of totality that's nothing to sneeze at it's going to be quite an, an amazing experience though you get four and a half minutes if you're across Texas it's not going to do you much good if you're cloaked in clouds so now we're taking a look at the European this is hot off the presses this morning total cloud cover put this into motion and as we scroll through April 7th here you can kind of see this initial system roll through here across the northern plains corresponding cold front there kind of a stationary front back down across from the southeast texas then we go into the morning hours of april 8th and you kind of see these clouds streaming in here how high are these clouds going to be are they going to be you know are you going to be able to see through them is it going to totally obscure the sun these are all good questions but you can see right at the 18th there you get a little bit of clearing in some areas so you there's still some hope that we may get some total solar eclipse viewing across texas or arkansas and a little better probably i know this doesn't look that great but some of the models been showing a little bit better conditions across you know Indianapolis and Cleveland where the totality is going to very, pass very close to maybe St. Louis off to the south and east but you can see it's kind of a cat and mouse game you got to gamble and kind of pick what you want to do because if you're trying to remain mobile on the day of the eclipse I got to remind you the roads are going to be packed you may not be able to make much headway on the day of the eclipse but look at the northeast here kind of a little gem showing up there the past few days not many clouds across Maine and some of southeast Canada here now if we take a look at the Canadian model is this on to something here is this you know better representing what is going to happen across Texas because as we go in towards the eclipse forecast you can kind of see a little bit thinner clouds here maybe even a bit of a break here across some of texas or arkansas and better viewing maybe up towards indianapolis you know in southeast of st louis and again the northeast has been pretty steadfast here especially across portions of maine as getting a nice show here for the total solar eclipse now just a reminder here too as well if you are viewing it across the northeast you're still getting a good show three minutes and 26 seconds is nothing to sneeze at here you can go all the way up to the checkpoint here you don't have to be under the perfect path there but you're still getting that three minutes and 26 seconds there right across uh, portions of northern new hampshire and maine is gonna have great viewing here it looks like as well 
And if you're traveling out of Montreal or Canada and you drop back down on Highway 55, you're getting about three minutes and, uh, what is it, three minutes and 33 seconds there, I think it is, 331, not bad at all. Now, taking a look, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, I believe this is or very close to it. You're still getting three minutes and 49 seconds. So again, and that goes right over the top of the city there. So if it is clear skies, that is really going to be a treat for the city of Cleveland. Now, looking at the GFS, this one is from the 12Z run. This is kind of hot off the presses here as well. And as we go on into the 8th here on Monday, you can see the GFS just kind of has this cloak of clouds across Texas, Arkansas, and even up trying to get up towards, you know, places like St. Louis. It might ruin it for some viewers there as well. But again, these may be high clouds, and you may still be able to catch glimpses of the sun with those high clouds around. But again, look at the northeast pretty clear out there so if you can make pl change, uh, changes to your plans and get out there you might want to do it i haven't checked ticket prices for flying out there or anything or whatnot and it's probably too late to start driving from the west coast to make it out there anyway unless you're a super diehard but anyway you know look into it and this is the North American model, 12 kilometer resolution. So it's not high resolution, but it's just now come into range. And it kind of shows a little bit of an interesting picture here as well, because it kind of does show some of these breaks across Texas, Arkansas, and maybe across, you know, places across Indianapolis or Indiana there, and, you know, maybe Ohio as well. But again, the Northeast, look at that kind of a little diamond in the rough out there as far as cloud cover is concerned. Models coming to pretty good agreement there for nice viewing across a lot of the Northeast. Now, this is the one I can't wait to get in our range here because this only goes out 60 hours. So you sort of see if I scroll all the way out to 60 hours, it goes out to about the night of the 7th right now. But by tomorrow morning, we're going to have a view of this thing here and it's going to start to show some of the higher resolution stuff and the cloud cover here as well. So hopefully we can get a better picture on just who is going to be cloudy and who is going to be clear. But again, you can kind of see that trend for the northeast being clear coming up here on April 8th. So anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. I'll do another briefing tomorrow morning. We'll start looking at the high resolution model stuff. And yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of a crapshoot because I've got my stuff set up here in portions of Texas and I'm just going to try to stay mobile here. But I'm going to keep in mind that you don't want to get too crazy with it because you don't want to get stuck somewhere that you don't want to be because there's going to be a lot of people on the road. I don't it's hard, it's hard to imagine. I mean, I was just off in Eastern Oregon where it's very sparsely populated for the 2017. It was absolutely packed and it took me forever just to even get back towards the Cascades where these regions aren't even that heavily populated. And of course, Texas is much more heavy populated around some of these big cities out there. So be careful if you're trying to position last minute, caution, or if you need to get back at a certain time, remember it takes many times longer to get back than it would normally under normal conditions. So anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.